parsing and parser. Uh, we explain in this lecture uh, what's the fundamental operation of uh, parsing and parser and uh, what we will uh, explain is how to build canonical or mathematical formulas behind the operation of parser. This video is subject to copyright only. To maximize the use of this session, please connect a headphone and mic if you can. Stay in a quiet place. Adjust the sound of your computer. Close all other programs running on your computer. The instructor will direct you to open any other required program to use. Close chat programs and social media such as Facebook, Twitters, Messengers, WhatsApp, etc. Maximize your screen to see the four corners on this slide on your screen. If you understand the operation of a compiler, compiler will take a, a program file in English-like language and transfer it to a machine code or machine language. Compilers and interpreters are uh, inter interchange terms in this particular uh, lecture. We will focus on compilers. However, the same uh, operations will be valid for interpreter. Uh, for compilers we uh, and interpreters, you may review uh, the definitions in the previous lectures or in the early courses of computer science. Compilers is a compiler where we transfer the program at once uh, or as epoch into one machine code. Interpreters will work on every sentence. In both operations, both will work on every sentence. Uh, the compilers will mainly have two blocks. You may have more uh, blocks as uh, compilers will get sophisticated. Here we are looking for a very primitive compiler. So the compiler will have a lexical analyzer where it accepts input string and the input strings will come from ordered uh, program file. Then the lexical analyzer will check the, the content and identify keywords, integers, identifiers, or uh, terms. It describe uh, grammar mistakes, uh, spelling mistakes. If the machine will not find the actual uh, term or the actual variable name, and then it will move it to a parser. And the output of these two will end up to be the machine code. So lexical analyzer, recognize the lexemes of the input files. Lexemes means the component or the content of the input file, such as um, keywords, integers, identifiers, and variables. Usually it's built over uh, DFA and um, uh, determinate finite automata, and is usually based on a series of a regular language because Programming language is defined as a subset of the English language. It's not a free contest language. Yes, I understand. There are now new compilers where it deals with more natural language. However, this natural language processing is a, a superset and is not part of this particular course. Barzer will know the grammar of the programming language to be compiled. It will construct different derivative and derivative tree uh, the der derivations tree and derivatives uh, have been covered before and if you have question please go back to this particular sections um, of the input program it also converts the derivations into a machine language so here I want to drive an example of a parser so if I have a program the program will be statement list or list of statements the list of statements will will uh, could be a list of statements so the program will be a state a list of statements. The statement list could be statement or statement list and a statement using the post uh, uh, the pre the prefix uh, or the suffix uh, kind of manipulation. The statement itself could be an expression, which basically a mass computation. It could also be an if statement, or it could be a while statement or it could be a set of statement list. Then I need to define what's expression. Expression can be an expression plus an expression or an expression minus an expression or a variable ID. Uh, 
here I don't have in this exp in this as a definition of a multiplication here is only I explain plus and minus uh, and if a statement it could be an if expression then a statement or an if expression then statement else another statement a while statement could be a while expression do statement this particular definition explain what a parser or what is the grammar the parser will look after the parser will find the derivation for an input file so for example i have an input string which is an expression which is 10 plus 2 times 5 so the expressions which will use or the parsing uh, rule which will get this expression to be understood it's an e where expression plus an expression or expression times an expression or an integer so this particular uh, expression the derivations of it will look like this so you have an expression plus an expression an expression plus expression times an expression so it could be 10 plus 2 times 5 so these derivations here will lead to a derivation tree and as I said if you don't remember the derivation tree please refer, refer back to the, der the derivation tree example the derivation tree are used to build machine code so you have um, multiplication of e uh, 2 and 5 with a and then uh, add b 10 plus a so this is our the machine code a and b in this case usually are registered we talk about a simple exhaustive parser and this simple exhaustive parser is we will build an exhaustive search parser that examine all possible derivations of a specific grammar so you have an input string you have a grammar and you have the derivation and this is the exhaustive parser now these parsers they do have few things number one is how you can get an expression and make sure the expression is valid so you can do this in multiple ways one way is to build an exhaustive search then you build the exhaustive tuples and then you can search for match or you may you build a state machine and you take it step by step so if i have an input string a a b b as terminals the exhaustive parser could be s where s will lead to s and then the, the s string will be a s string b s string can be b s string a and s could be uh, empty uh, somebody else may decide that s could lead to a b and this was one of the example before and s can lead to b a um, in this case you will take the nullification out so the derivation of this so in phase one i want to find the derivation of a a b b so in this case i will find out that this particular two terms are not valid because i don't have um, this cannot be possibly using this production so i will only apply these two rules in phase two i will explain then I will explore the next step for each derivation from phase one. So S will lead to SS and S will lead to ASB. So AS, SS, and then triple S. And I will do the derivation in this way, as you see it here, to try to examine all possible derivations. And then for the lower um, possible expression, I will do all the possible differentiation, all the possible uh, derivation as well including the lambda and in this way i will eliminate the terms which cannot produce this particular term and uh, in phase three i will explore explore all derivative so here i have all derivative that could be uh, explored so at the end this will be the rule or the sentence which is can produce a a b b you got confused i'm confused too so i want to go back and ask you what is the goal here or what i'm looking for the question is i have all of these rules inside my parser i am getting this input string 
the question will be which one of these rules I will apply to this particular string to be able to understand the string and convert it to a machine language. So the steps here will take the string, you understand the parsing mechanism, you build a derivation tree and from the derivation tree you build a machine language. So I am focusing on that. So to do so, I will build an exhaustive search. So the exhaustive search will apply all these rules for S to figure out which one is more applicable to drive to get the derivative A or the derivation AABB, which is a single branch of derivative. So I will find out that these two, these two cannot produce this term. So I will eliminate them. And then I will look at each one of the derivative of these two uh, symbols or these two relations or these two uh, axioms or these two rules whatever you call it and from that place I will say this is all possible using these terms or this global rule this all possible combinations I can get and this all possible combination I can get for these particular terms I will eliminate the ones which does not produce this particular derivative and then I will get into the phase, phase uh, 3 where I will explore all possible derivation. So out of these possible derivations, I can keep these derivations going on. And from that point, I will find out that all possible derivation will get me the last sentence, or this will be the last one, which get me all possible derivations. I will eliminate the one which does not get the possible derivations. So the exhaustive search, or if you want to exhaust all these searches, I will come up with this particular rule, which give me the derivation or give me the understanding for this input string. So if we want to understand how complex this and how long will it take, <coughs> suppose that the grammar doesn't have a production of the form uh, a production or nullification and does not have production of a times b which is the unit production so since there is no empty the derivation of this production will end up to omega and omega here or w will be the all lenses of different terms so it holds that xi would be less than uh, or equal the length of the terms w for all i so since there is no unit production, the uh, W will always increase. Every time I do a derivation, W will increase. So the most steps needed to drive W will be um, the number of I's or the index. So if I want to do W twice, three times, four times. So at most I have two W derivation steps are required to produce the term W. So the exhaust search require at most twice the length of the term W. So if I'm looking for four terms, the exhaust will be at most eight, two times four. So suppose I have a grammar K production, the possible derivation choice be examined in the very beginning will be K because in the example I have, I examine the input K production. Then in phase two, if all K production will be part of the process, I will, I will expand each K production to another K production. So the maximum here will be K square. And similarly, if all K square will be valid production rules, I will move it and I will expand each one to another K. So in, in phase I, the most K I minus one times K, most will be K. So if I want to have the exploration phase one, two, three, till k to the two w, I will have the order of k to power two times the length of w. This is the extreme k where you have all, all production rules have been used all the time and the maximum phases you need to iterate over the string will be two to the power w. This importance, the importance of this relation is it describes the length, uh, how long will it take in number of iterations. 
it will it will also identify how long how much information we will have faster parsers it's another example here there is exist a faster parsing algorithm for specialized al uh, grammar and one of the specialized grammar will be is uh, uh, Grambeck normal form where we have the variable a and then you sorry the symbol a or the terminal symbol a lead to variable so each pair of variable terminal x and sigma where uh, appear in the production x sigma times w so this restricted formula will look like this so that's the s grammar s will lead to terminal a s s can be terminal b s s and s can lead to c so each string has a unique derivations. So the, in the exhausted search parsing, there is only one choice in each phase. Steps for, for a phase equal to one. Total steps for parsing a string W will be the length or the number of, uh, of symbols in W. Next, we give a parsing algorithm W in time order of W3. It's a very close to the worst case optimal since parsing can be done using the solving a matrix multiplications so here i'm trying to figure out a special type of grammars where it will have lower than the optimal the, the worst case scenario so now we talk about the shomosky uh, parsing algorithm so if i have a arbitrary grammar g in shomosky normal form a string w so if W will belong to the language X, the, to the language of the grammar, the, or, the number of steps will be order of magnitude of W to the power to cube. And this can be easily verified. So now I wanna verify that um, if I have the Shomsky normal form, the order of magnitude for barsing will be uh, the, the length of the words time cube or to the power three cube. Consider a grammar G in Shomosky normal form. Denote that FW is the set of variables W of the string W. So if X belong to FW, if only X can be produced by Cartesian products or by repeating the symbols and producing W. So in this case, if S belong to FW, then W will be part of the language of the grammar which means that S will lead to the cross products or the Cartesian products of W. If uh, W is not belong to the grammar, this will be the parsing will not produce the input. So to compute this, I will look at the following. If W will have a prefix and suffix, then X will belong to FU and Y will belong to FV. So Y will produce all tuples or all cross products of V X will produce all cross products of U. So in this case, the production H equal to XY. So H will belong to FW. So H will equal to XY, UY, UV equal to Y. So I can examine all the prefix and suffix and the results will be all these propositions. And this is the basics. At the basics, the, res the recursion we have of a string one will be um, proved. The whole algorithm can be implemented using dynamic programming and I will give you first an example right now. So if I have a grammar and this grammar will be S will lead to variable A, variable B, and A can lead to B, B, A, and B can be A, B, B. Now I want to determine if A, A, B, B, B belong to L, G. As we explained, we go in an exhaust we go in a search way so the first one we will explore all possible lenses so all possible lenses number one if i have a lens of one it will be each variable in its own if i have a lens of two it will be a a then a b then b b then b b and i will eliminate b and b b and b b because i will only do it search once uh, if i want to do three so this will be the three ones if i want to do four so it will be four terms if I want to do five, it will be the whole thing. So if I want to get these terms here, I will find out that F will be the set of whatever of these axioms, which will lead to this term. So A will be the subset of the variable capital A. B will be the subset of the variable uh, B. Then I will go back to AA. 
So if I want to understand AA, I will move down here and show you that AA can be analyzed using a prefix. So the prefix will be capital A and the prefix, the suffix will be capital B. So there is no production for X equal to AA because AA does not show up here. So this will be empty. However, here there is a production for A and production for B. So X can be equal to AB and AB is the actual term B. So the product and AB is an actual S. So the production subset of which produce the term the prefix AB will be S and will be B. So in this case here, S will be A and B. And similarly, you can get that BB will end up to be the term A and BB will be end up to be the term A as usual. Now, if I want to understand the decomposition of AAB and ABB and triple B, I will get one example here of AAB. So I will do the prefix first as one prefix and the suffix. So I know from the previous steps that production of A will be equal to A and AB will be S and B. The union of these two uh, will, uh, will be the production. So X will be equal to AS. So there is no AS here. X will be AB. So there is the term B here and AB is actually here. So it's uh, the of this particular decomposition can be interpreted using S lead to AB and B uh, lead to BB. The second way to decomposition, you, to do the decomposition based on prefix and suffix. So the prefix of two and suffix of one, I know from previous that's AA is the empty set and B is uh, B. So uh, the combination of empty set and B will be equal to empty set. So FAA B will be H1 union H2, which will be basically SB. And this is, will be here the uh, coefficient. Similarly, you can do the four. Similarly, you can do the five. So this is will give me the sub uh, expressions or the expression subset of these expressions, which can interpret AABBB. If I want to understand the approximate the time, so number of substrings here, uh, so it's the order of number of substrings square times the number of suffix. And this will be the order of uh, the, the length uh, cube.